Hey troops, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ryan. I'm a former commando from the United Kingdom. Today's date, Wednesday the 26th, and we have another update for Ukraine for you guys. We've got a little bit of different layout today just to be able to display the information differently, guys. Change things up slightly. If you like it, smash the like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and we're going to just get straight into this one today, guys. I'll see you in the comments. As always, thanks for being here today. Thank you guys, I appreciate you all. Um, let's just jump straight into it then. So today we're going to look at a few things. We've got an update from the fabulous Institute of Study of War um, from understandingwar.org. It's a fantastic site that I basically get most of my information from. 80-85% of my information comes from this website. So make sure you go give them a follow, guys. All right. Without them, we wouldn't be able to give you updates like we do. Okay, but um, yeah, we've got the map basically on the screen as well today because there's a, I might be jumping between two different maps and this information as well. So I want to be able to display it all in one screen without having to jump backwards and forwards. I know there's been quite a few people wanted this, so we're going to try this out. And I guess the viewers will, uh, will let me know if they like it or not. But today... Anyway, so how the Institute of Study of War does things, obviously these things get published, but it's 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 normally like a day before it's uh, they're referring to the information from. So that's what we've got to go off. Okay, guys. So let's just get straight into it. Members of the Russian Solvigi faction continue to voice their dissatisfaction with Russian war efforts in Ukraine, indicating that Russian President Vladimir Putin will continue to struggle to appease the pro-war consti um, constituents in the long term. We've spoke about that in the past, about how he's wanting to please people. And, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to say he's under political pressure because he obviously uh, runs his country very differently to, for instance, the United Kingdom. Okay, where political pressure, you might be forced a hand to be able to, uh, um, you come up with decisions based on whether or not you want to be popular within your party or not, so you can get voted back in. Putin's not under the same type of pressure in that regard, so I don't think um, he wants to, you know, appease that many pro-war constituents, but I think he is under a little bit of pressure to do that, okay? He is seen as that type of guy. The Russian uh, Silvoki faction refers to people with meaningful power bases within Putin's inner circle who are fielding combat forces in Ukraine. Chechen leader Ramzan Kadrov complained that the Russian response to claimed Ukraine strikes on Russian territory have been weak, nothing that Russian must raise uh, Ukrainian cities from the earth. Uh, noting, sorry... <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Kadyrov also claimed that Russia is now engaged in a war with Ukraine instead of a special military operation. I mean, come on, guys. We all know what this... Um, <laughs> it's the fact that they're arguing over the terminology of what the bloody call this thing. It shows you how, how laughable it bloody is. It's... Um, a special operation war, like, it, it, listen, at the end of the day, we can argue terminology all we want. We understand full well that uh, it's 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 an invasion of a, of a, of a land where people are going to get killed in the process, okay? So we can argue over terminologies. Um, I, I like to not really care too much about what it's actually classed as, whether you class it as a special operation or war or, or what, whatever. I'm not bothered about that. It's, um, it's an invasion where people are getting, unfortunately, killed. Um, yeah, the, the the terminology doesn't really bother me too much. I know some people get caught up in that, but it's uh, it, for me, it's all about let, let, let's forget about the terminology. Let's look at what it is. And if you see for what it is with your open eyes, then uh, you'll come to the right conclusion. Yeah, special operation instead of why? Come on. Um, given that Ukrainian forces are fighting on Russian territory. That's alleged as well. Uh, Kadrov noted that he is unhappy with the lack of Russian retaliation despite the establishment of martial law. Kadrov had remained relatively quiet throughout October. Yeah, loads of information in that, actually. That actual paragraph is a massive, uh, it tells a massive story. Kadrov's statement indirectly criticizes the scale of the Russian missile campaign against Ukraine energy infrastructure and is in line with military blogger critics that followed days after the massive campaign on October 10th. So actually, the this um, this campaign, this uh, how can I put it? The, the 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 infrastructure, you know, how, how in terms of the the 
the the rockets that they were using, the missiles, that that campaign's happened started on the tenth and is kind of hasn't really stopped. Yes, we've seen a um, an influx over the few days after the tenth and mainly on the tenth of you know cities within Ukraine that have nothing to do with the war per se and not actively engaged with uh, war fighting on the ground. Them them were the cities that actually got hammered through through these missile strikes. Um, so yeah, they were were they were actually you know targeting energy infrastructure, which I was massively against. Institute Studio Wars previously assessed that Putin's missile campaign is unlikely to satisfy pro-war nationalist um, camp in long term, given that Putin cannot fix the many flaws within the Russian military campaign in Ukraine, nor can he deliver his maximalist promises. This is the thing with um, with that military. I honestly do not see the problems that we've spoken about within Russian's military ever being resolved, certainly not in this war, okay? And we talked about what would it need to change all of the problems within the Russian military. Man, if you want to get really deep into it, we're talking about, you know, societal problems within Russia. We're not just talking about a problem with their military. There's a lot of things within society, within Russia, that's... Um, you know, you've got to look at their history, where they've came from, what they used to be backed on politically and how they used to manage their society politically. And, um, you know, those types of things, uh, I don't want to say problems because, you know, it's the way their society was run 50 years ago. They, You know, that's the way it was. It's like, you know, you're not going to change the way they were. But the fact of the matter remains, that type of societal change that's took place within the past 20 years or so is going to take generations after generations to be able to get anywhere we're close to what we're like in, you know, the, the in, in Western society. So I think that's a, a product of the way their military is, is the way they've actually been living over the past 50, 60, 70 years and the way they're trying to change into this... Um, in, uh, in, uh, they, 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 they're newly conceived in the way they actually are right now. And I think that's going to take generations to, you know, find a true identity of what Russia is truly all about, okay? And the society problems that affect their country um, are, are, are actually, you know, shown right for us in Ukraine within their military. They're, them problems are not an easy fix, guys, okay? Little things like we're talking about drinking um, till, you, till, till, you, till your brain explodes. Yeah. Yes, the British soldiers, we like to have a drink and stuff, but when you see the, the lads on the battlefield or on exercise, hey, professional as they come, there's not a vodka bottle in sight, okay? And I can be honest about that, we're professional through and through. Those problems that Russia have with their military are societal problems that are going to take generations to, 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 to clean out, so to speak. Let's look at America, all right? America, in the grand scheme of things, compared to uh, many other countries are quite a newly established um, entity. They're not, they haven't really been long, or around lo a long time as that superpower, um, which is testament to them growing to the superpower they are, how well they've came, but they're relatively new as a society. So all the problems we see in America, and I don't want to delve into politics too much, it's, um, it's down to society being, you know, relatively new. And yes, we're talking about hundreds of years still, but in terms of a society, uh, you know, to iron out the crease of the problems that they may or may not have. Still a relatively new country, guys. Let, let's let's be, be quite honest about that, okay? And these things, in, in truth, are going to take generations to change. And they have changed over the past 50 years. You see the massive developments that uh, America's went through socially. Came a long, long way, okay? Troops, a long way to go still. But when you think about Great Britain, we've had a long time to get to where we are right now. And granted, we're not perfect. I'm not saying we are the, um, the pinnacle of perfection. But we've had a long time to get to where we've got guys okay um and that's what i'm trying to say the problems that we're seeing on the battlefield with russia are not necessarily going to change you know it's certainly not in this war certainly not in the next 20 30 40 years it's going to be a few generations yet you know and that's just my honest opinion on the whole thing i'd like to hear your thoughts on that um we digressed a little bit, but uh, Kradrov's rant also highlighted Putin's error in annexing four Ukrainian oblasts before Russian forces reached the oblasts' borders, which has created confusion about where Russian territories begin. ISW has previously reported that Putin's annexation of the Ukrainian territories has likely triggered criticism within the Kremlin elite, which will likely intensify as Putin loses more occupied territories. 
Agree. Now, Russian Silvolki have also uh, directly confronted Putin regarding the progress of the Russian war in Ukraine, which further highlights their significance within Russian power structures. Yeah, I mean, it does if they are highlighting these things and directly confronting Putin. Um, we're, we're talking about power structures within power structures there, aren't we? You know, so who's really pulling the strings in Russia? You know, we'll, we'll probably find out in 50 years or so when things have died down a bit. Now, the Washington Post site and US intelligence revealed that Wagner Group financier um, Yvendki sharply criticised the Russian Ministry of Defence in a private conversation. Prigozhin reportedly accused the Russian MOD of heavily relying on Wagner forces while failing to finance the group or provide necessary resources, which is consistent with his numerous public statements. Guys, we've spoke about this before in terms of the the whole financial um, obligation in and around uh, you know Russia's military in general. And I am talking about the private military contractors as well in that it's um it's it's been problematic okay from the very start people are arguing now where the money's coming from where it's going to go because at the end of the day in a corrupt society uh you're going to get corrupt things happening and there's money going missing within russia that's that's one thing for certain guys there's money that should be going in certain areas that just just haven't been that's that's an absolute fact but expect that in corrupt societies it happens in every society but it's going to be quite prominent within russia and especially in the military you know we get budgets for this and then you know they scrimp and scrape on a few things put a couple of quid in their back pockets and then funny old thing you end up with kit that haven't even uh you end up with vehicles that haven't had uh their their tires pumped up in 20 year okay and uh they've they've degraded to such a degree that on the battlefield they're uh non-operational okay so this is nothing new and uh the fact that they're arguing with well we've even seen in this war um, you know, people with with their own businesses being threatened physically with the the, the 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 fact that they will be taken and their employees will be taken from their workplace and put on the front lines if they do not donate to um, the war effort directly. That's the type of country that we're messing with here. It's um, it's it's crazy, guys. All right, it is. It honestly, it's a, it's a different kettle of fish. So finance, the Russian military, private military contractors and stuff. Yeah, I think there's definitely going to be problems and problems ongoing with the regard who's going to get their money and when they're going to get their money. Um, Prigozhin has denied ever criticising the Russian armed forces in response to the Washington Post report. A denial that is uh, patently false given his repeated public attacks on the MOD. Um, the criticism revealed that the Post further supports Institute of Study of War's assessment that Prigozhin holds a unique position that allows him to reap the benefits of Putin's dependency on Wagner forces without having to formally responsibility for any Axis area uh, in Ukraine. And while wielding considerable influence in the information space, he is accumulating a following on Telegram with some Wagner affiliated channels having over 300,000 followers. Wow, more followers than most of us YouTubers who were, um, you know, directly linked in reporting on this war, is directly interacting while online publications and is reportedly financing the Riafan federal news agency media conglomerate. Wow, that's interesting. Prigozhin is likely using a growing number of platforms to acquire power and has even previously engaged Riafan in promoting his September prisoner recruitment drive to Russian audiences. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't want to pay the uh, the 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 prisoner recruitment drive either. That's uh, I mean, do they deserve to get released from jail to be paid anyway? I'm going to say no. We've got some serious criminals within that fraternity. Okay, Putin's regime is largely dependent on Putin's monopolization of the state information space, but Prigozhin is increasingly challenging that monopoly. The information space is, uh, you know, it's 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 what it's it's very powerful but very damaging at the least. You know, the propaganda that comes out of Russia is no man's business. Okay, the false information and everything else um i've even seen on my own channel we have um you know it's t targeted um russian bots as i was like to say or people could class them to coming out here putting false information on even comments and stuff like that which obviously i report and they get uh, reported as spam you see it on every channel guys okay the misinformation out there but that's what happens in a country in a, in, a, in a group of countries where, um, you know, the, the politicians, the people in power don't want the people below them to know the full truth. So they give false information. I'm not going to mention any countries, but the further east you go, you see that happening massively. OK, you are a product of the information you receive. So unless you get a fair crack of the whip of information, a fair crack to be able to read and decipher what you want and make your own conclusion on it. If there's just one alternative and you're only allowed to be spoon fed that one alternative 
alternative media, then you're a product of the information you receive. That's very, very dangerous. I think that's one of the main dangers society faces now. Um, you know, it, it, it just a channeled version of whatever this was going on in the world instead of having multiple sources of information. That's why the internet was created for, to have multiple sources of information to be able to give you the, um, the, 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 the ability to come to a conclusion yourself and have that freedom of thought, okay? We're seeing that get um, condensed down massively over this, and that's why I'm doing this in the first place, and other YouTubers will be doing the same thing, to just have a different opinion on things, okay? It's really, really that simple, guys. But... Moving on, let's get into some of um, some information. What's going on in the east of Ukraine? Not a lot in terms of information coming out due to the fact that we are, um, you know, a media blackout is, uh, is underway. But there is some information, guys, and let's get into it right now. I will be um, moving the map back and forth. Okay, so let's get into it now. Russian Eastern Ukraine, Oskil River, Kremenina Line. Now, the Russian forces claimed that Ukrainian troops conducted limited ground attacks west of. Svato on October 25th. So let's look at Svato. Go to east of Ukraine. And here we are. So major, major point this. Let's get my trusted pen up. Let it load up a few seconds. Now, this this, this is Svato. I'll tell you what it's, what it's like. Svato is as important, if not more important, um, as Lehman was, okay, in this counteroffensive. So Svato, why is it important? Well, you just have to look at this front line in which they're fighting on, okay? Um is the direction that Ukraine's pushing towards Svato. Now, Svato has many different lines of, um, you know, communication that are going to be held within Svato. Communication on the battlefield happens a few ways, okay? Either by foot, via road, via the um, via the internet, via telephone lines. All of these um, require infrastructure to be in place, though, guys, okay? Makes it very hard if that infrastructure isn't in place. You've got different levels of infrastructure within this area of Svato. You've got roads, you've got highways, systems you've got major transport links you've got um within those areas that are built up you've got the uh you know you've got communications via the internet you've got phone telephone lines all of that really does help with the information space so Vitor is a critical logistical um supply hub for anyone who wants to take it it's a major major in major place on the battle space and there's a lot of individual um settlements along that region as well so if you take Svator the chances of taking the settlements close to that is very high because let's face it you're not taking Svator unless you plan on taking these areas either just before concurrent or just after you've taken Svator right these areas here um, form a massive defensive frontline position now if you look at this area if you take these areas that's one hell of a bit of a land there all right how long is this we're talking um, let me let me have a look at this. Boom. Why can't I click on there? Two seconds, guys. Sorry. Bang. Right, it's not letting me do it. So let's forget about that. Um, but anyway, you, you get you get the point, all right, guys. This is a, this is a massive massive area that they need to take. Um, and it's going to take some time to take that as well, troops. All right. I don't know what the area is per se, but it's going to be it's going to be quite far. I would say, yeah. I don't even want to make a guess on that, but it's a hell of a uh, distance, that's for sure. Now, as for tour, we zoom in slightly. Hopefully, you can see it on the map. Pretty sure you can. Yeah, quite a populated area, quite dense. You know, the fighting that could take place there is going to be um, is, is is going to be tough. It's surrounded by open fields. However, there is quite a lot of settlements in and around that region. All right. Now, is it going to be hard for Ukraine to take that? I think we're seeing a massive slowdown, especially with the media blackout. We're not seeing as much information coming out there, guys. All right. But Russian sources claimed that. Russian artillery fire repelled Ukrainian forces during attempt attack on Kuzamivka. Right, where is that? Ah, here we go. Right, so artillery repelled this little settlement here. It stopped Ukraine from pushing forward. So that's why we're not seeing too much traction from the areas that they are holding. Berestov, um, Stalmanivka. 
these areas. So that was repelled by artillery. We are going to see that now. There's one thing for sure. When the artillery shells run out, that's when you're going to see Ukraine pushing forward anyway, because realistically, logically speaking, they're already in defendable positions there. This is just open field. So that front line exists literally because they were pushing them back with uh, artillery fire. But when the artillery fire stops, if they can push on through into these areas, you know, that's quite a major settlement and we'll see a bit of traction. The reason I don't think we're seeing as much traction is because the previous counteroffensive right hand side of the Oskil Reservoir and River there wasn't that many settlements it was just open fields so once they took that major feature there um it was it was pretty easy to progress but now we're seeing you know dense more densely populated areas leading up to Svato but that lull in the battle just like we saw in Lehman um is just a matter of time now guys look that's ancient news now we were talking about Lehman before and they were waiting and they were waiting but they wait for the right time and they moved in same as Vato. I think that's going to be the next major push I believe we're going to see in terms of where they're going to consolidate their efforts. I think they're going to be pushing into this general direction from quite large parts of their already established front line. I think this is the next major hit. Once they take that, we're going to have something that looks like this in terms of areas taken. All right. Then what they can do is they can push on out into these areas, push on through this front line and push on through and, uh, link up and then you've control another major area there boom boom then what's next all right you've got another major area there and then it's the push on through all of this area here has got a lot of settlements to take and this is going to take time but be rest assured i believe the next major push is going to be for this area here guys because you just look at all of the transport links as well let's draw lines where we can see you've got a major transport link there linking all the way through to the front line to these areas you've got a major transport link all the way down there i think i can't remember what the name of the highway is but there's all of this highways uh, basically come to a massive junction in the middle of Svator. so all of these areas um effectively communication lines for resupply for everything relating to the war effort all links with Svato. So if they can take Svato, they knock a lot of those supply routes out for Russia. Lines of communication have been knocked out. It really does make it hard thereon for Russia to defend in any of these areas. Okay, guys. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting. And I've just noticed, I don't think you could see my pen on the map so i've just been talking and yeah it's actually not showing the pen on the map here there is a pen on there i have been doing loads of annotations i am apologize why that hasn't been shown i don't know why that is the case mm, might have to fix that one guys sorry but if you understand what i'm talking about anyway I've, I've spoke about it guys okay um yeah i don't know why that's happened sorry now 15 kilometers west of store a russian military blogger also claimed that Ukrainian troops conducted unsuccessful offensive operations. <coughs> excuse me, along the um, along that line, about ten kilometers southwest of Svator. Okay, so they are trying to put. Yeah, they're trying to push for that area. Various Russian sources claim that Ukraine troops are grouping forces west of Svator for future counteroffensive operations, and that Russian forces are strengthening their defensive positions around Svator. Ukrainian Luhansk Oblast head Sereny Haredi noted that Russian troops mined the entire bank of the Krasna River near Svator. Wow! Apparently, in anticipation of potential Ukraine advance. Right, so Krasna River is where is that i believe it's this blue feature here i don't know if you can see you won't be able to see my pen it's basically where that i think that is it all right if that is the case um that's terrible because yeah, these, these are going to affect people for generations to come, those mines. Terrible, man. Russian sources additionally claimed that Ukrainian forces conducted an unsuccessful frontal attack uh, or assault on Kremlin in October 25th. Um, a Russian military blogger claimed that Russian troops repelled the attack. The Ukrainian general staff also reported that Ukrainian troops repelled a Russian attack on uh, Bilokrivka, about 10 kilometers south of Kremlina, suggesting that Russian troops are conducting efforts to retake lost positions along the Donetsk Oblast border. So it looks as if 
what what it sounds like to me is they are putting up more of a fight than they did uh, for Lehman uh, or Blast. Uh, uh, sorry, Lehman and um, the Oscar Reservoir and where the original um, counteroffensive started in and around here, guys. Okay, so seems like they're putting up a bit more of a fight. But how long can they put that fight up for? That's the question that I want to ask you guys. I think that's only a matter of. Um, it's only a matter of time, and I do believe the fact that they are putting up a great fight gives me more reason that uh, you know Ukraine really needs to take Svetov because that's going to hinder the uh, movement of everything militarily-wise for Russia if they can take that major settlement within the Oblast area, um, within the Luhansk Oblast area, yeah. So... I think Svato is going to be a major operational push for them. We've seen there Russian military bloggers have stated that Ukrainians have been trying to push, trying to push. Obviously, you know, you can't just take these areas um, with free will. You've got to push and push, and sometimes it takes two or three attempts to be able to do that. But they seem to be coming up against a lot more opposition against Russia. There's a bit more of a fight at hand, but Svato is quite a strategically important uh, place at this moment in time. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough one, guys. It's even tougher to do this without getting... Uh, um, you know, obviously there's a media blackout within the areas and stuff, but key points of today in East Svato is the area that I think needs to be taken to push this counteroffensive further forward. But guys, if you've made it this far, thank you for your support. Um, a few points of admin before we go. If you want to become a member of the YouTube channel, press the join button. Link is in the description. Or if you want to become a member of Patreon, the link is also in the description. Um, or both. Then, hey, guys, dig out blind. I'm um, also on Rumble as an alternate source of media to be able to put this content out, you know, just to diversify slightly. And um, I'll see you in the comments, troops, okay? Wherever you are, peace and stay safe. Take it easy.